Hi, welcome to Don's Tech. In this video, we are going to be exploring how to roll our turbo motor using your Raspberry Pi. If your Internet of Things project requires precision control, like controlling the movement of a robot or a 3D printer or a simple movement mechanism like opening or closing a door lock, then the servo motor component is the ideal for use. We will discuss how to control this component using the GPIO of our Raspberry Pi and some issues that you might encounter while dealing with this component. An example issue is that why is my servo motor not moving the full 180 degree? We will, di we will discuss the solutions using Python code and how did we arrive with the computation. Are you excited? Then let's start exploring. Get in your IoT project. We will not be discussing deeply about servo motor principles here as we will be focusing on the code and interfaces with your Raspberry Pi. Some practical applications of servo motors are moving parts of the 3D printer, making the robots move, or even simple movement like closing the door lock. A servo motor contains an AC or a DC motor, a shaft connected to the internal gears, and a control circuit with a feedback mechanism. They are often called closed loop system that automatically correct itself through feedback sensors, similar to how the thermostat works in our home. The movement is constrained from 0 to 180 degrees, unlike the stepper or the normal motors that could rotate 360 degrees. If you give Google for the data sheet of your servo motor, like the common SG90, you would notice about the concept of the duty cycle. Apparently, if we send a duty cycle from 1 milliseconds to 2 milliseconds out of the total 20 milliseconds period from our Raspberry Pi GPIO PWM pin, then we can move the shaft of the servo motor from 0 degree to the full 180 degree theoretically. I mentioned theoretically as you will see later when we go to the code. From the diagram, assuming we draw a line from this point up to this point to create a 180 degree, a 1 millisecond pulse will move the gear to the 0 degree. A 2 millisecond pulse will move to the opposite end at the 180 degree. And a 1.5 millisecond pulse will move it to the 90 degree position. Discuss a little bit about duty cycle from the previous slide. But to expand further, Duty cycle is the it's the measure of the time the signal is active compared to the whole period. In the diagram, you would see that we have a signal that has a 20 millisecond period and a time and a 1 millisecond active pulse. To compute for the duty cycle, we follow this formula, wherein the duty cycle is equal to the pulse width in seconds divided by the period in seconds also. So for a range of 1 milliseconds to 2 milliseconds from the data sheets of the, our servo, the following are the computation. For 1 milliseconds, it would be equal to 0 0.001 divided by 0 0.02 multiplied by the 100% coefficient, which is 5%. The next is the, for 1.5, it will be 7.5. And for a 2 millisecond pulse, it will be a 10% duty cycle. So to move the shaft from 0 to 180 degree, we need to supply a duty cycle between 5% to 10%. So you might be asking, why are we hung up to the duty cycle concept? It is because we will be using it in our code. This, see this, that, these two diagrams. Using RPI GPIO package, the how to adjust the movement is to set the duty cycle from 5% to 10%. Using GPIO0, which is, an, which is another library for controlling the GPIO of your Raspberry Pi, it's a little bit high level as they, are abstracted, they have abstracted everything to the servo class. And this servo class exposes a mean, a max, and a mid methods to set the servo shaft. 
Let us try if this is really how it sounds. The complete code, by the way, is in the, that we are going to use is in the description of this video. So let's now start discussing running the code. I have my Raspberry Pi in here together with my servo. The PWM, PWM signal of my servo is connected to the GPIO 12 of my Raspberry Pi. I have used an external power for my servo and both grounds are connected. So, let's start by connecting to our Raspberry Pi using SSH. I'm using PuTTY to SSH into my Raspberry Pi. I'm now connected. So, let's just go into my working directory. So, these files are available in the description of my video and is shown also in my GitHub code repository. Let's start checking out the test servo first. So, let's execute nano test servo. As you can see, in this code, we are just looping and then changing the duty cycle of our PWM pin. As I have mentioned earlier, we need to set the duty cycle from 5% up to 10% to achieve the full 0 to 180 degree movement. So let's try this by running this code using sudo python servo.py. Let's clear this one. sudo python test servo.py. As you can see, we are expecting the servo to move from 0 to the full 180 degree. But it seems that it's not moving that way. Let's try by using the other one, which is the GPIO0. So, in the GPIO0 code, we're just calling what we call as the method exposed by the servo class, which is the mean, the max, and the mid. And then let's see what will happen if we execute this code by running sudo python s servo gpio0. As you can see, the servo motor shop is still not moving the pull 0 to 180 degree. So it means that there's something wrong and we need to modify something with our code. The cause of this problem could be how our servo was created or set up and it's not up to the standard that is found in the datasheet specification. So to correct this one, we can use the adjustment that we can do in our Python code. So I have created two additional code, which is the test servo modify.py and the test gpio0 modify.py. And then to test, to check what, what is inside this nano test servo modify.py, you would notice that I have changed the duty cycle from 5-10% into 3-13%. to 13%. And then to set it at 90 degree, we have to put it at 3. So these values are actually something that I just figured out in tri using trial and error. And this might be different from what your servo should be. So you can test out your servo and adjust this value of the duty cycle. So 
Let's try running this code and verify if this will fix the issue. Let's execute sudo python and then the test servo modify.py. As you can see, the servo now is moving the pull 0 up to the 180 degrees. So somehow it has fixed the issue that we have in our earlier code. So let's check out the GPIO0. And as you can see from the code in here, there's just only two additional changes that I did, which is the minimum pulse width and the maximum. Can you guess how? I arrived with this particular value. If you want to figure out how did I arrive with this value, then you can check at the companion section, companion write-up of this video, which you will find in the description. So let's try to check out how it will work. So by execu executing sudo python, and then the test servo pio modifier. As you can see, it's now move, moving the full 0 to 180 degree of our servo. So, as you can see, we have now fixed the issue that we have in our servo motor earlier. If you have a different servo, like an MG90, you can actually change also the value of the duty cycle by trial and error. For me, what works for me is the value between the 2 and 11 and the 6.5. This value might be different from what you are going to, be, to experience with your servo motor. And that's all about how we are going to control our servo motor with your Raspberry Pi. I hope you learned something. Happy exploring! Hi! If you like the videos that I have created, then please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and other social media channels. Hit the not notification button so that you will get notified for new contents. Please do comment, like, and share. Happy exploring!